up you guys i'm john turner welcome back to what's the table we're out here on a beautiful afternoon just putting the work in i know you guys know a successful hunt does not start the day of there's a lot of planning and preparation goes into it so we're out here just working on feeders and working on the land we're going to continue our five-part series and tools and tactics that have made us better hunters very quickly in the early going with a quick review our likes and dislikes of our bad boy buggies recoil the 2013 model so let's jump into it all right, so I'm gonna start with just a quick walk around showing you the features of this 2013 Bad Boy Recoil and our experience in using each of them. This isn't gonna be overly technical. There are other videos out there, some of which from the manufacturer themselves that will kind of walk you through all the technical ins and outs. This isn't that. Um, we're gonna tell you about our experience in using this uh, and what you can expect if you purchase something like this. Again, this is 2013 Bad Boy Buggy Recoil 4x4. It's a 72 volt model. It has six 12 volt batteries wired in unison and it's a four-wheel drive with uh, four-wheel independent suspension. Um, you'll get a, a four-wheel and a rear wheel driving unless one of them slips and then the other wheels will kick in. We've had excellent experience taking this thing all over the property, up and down hills, streams, mud puddles. I've never gotten it stuck, not saying it's not possible, but my experience, this thing's like a billy goat. Side-by-side -side seating in the front, comes with a knee brake, nice cup holders, um, it's excellent when you have the family out just using it for a variety of purposes has a lot of storage inside with the glove compartments um, you can get this with the utility bed uh, in the back it looks like a, a little pickup truck bed um, we went with the side-by-side -side seat that looks kind of like the rear seating in a golf cart this flips down into a little utility space here it's filthy right now because we've been using it today but you can put bags of corn uh, or bags of mulch or whatever if you're using it around the house uh, or uh, farm and two tail lights in the rear it comes with a two inch uh, receiver uh, for a trailer hitch. If you have a utility trailer you want to tow behind it, um, you can do that as well. Uh, it comes with three point uh, safety harnesses in the front and in the rear. So when we put the kids on it in the back, at least we have some peace of mind. It feels a little bit safer. Um, each of the tires has a really aggressive tread on it. Uh, it's not the quietest or the, the smoothest if you're driving it on a paved surface around your neighborhood or something like that, but it does a heck of a job in the woods. Um, and we have a re really difficult time uh, getting this thing stuck. They seem to grip really well. This unit uh, came with four uh, gun racks in the front. I took two of them off uh, because we did everything that we could to remove every extraneous part on this unit, um, just to remove any so uh, source of noise going through the woods. Um, but these two do a great job. We just don't seem to need four. Um, the unit comes with a golf cart windshield on it. Again, we removed that just because it seems to you know, squeak a little bit as you go through the woods. Um, and we try to remove as much noise as possible. If you come around to the front, uh, a steel uh, inch and three quarters diameter uh, brush guard on the front. And we went ahead and added uh, an aftermarket basket, which I'm not sure the overall weight capacity, but this thing has held uh, 200 pounds of corn in it with no issue whatsoever. Um, and two headlights on it, uh, they do the job of getting you in and out of the woods, but they're not overly bright. Um, you may want to go back and add some brighter bulbs, or if you want some green LEDs or something like that, and if you wanted to use this overall unit for um, hog, hunt, hog hunting or something similar. Um, so overall, um, it's got, this one doesn't have all the bells and whistles of some of the newer models, the IS models that Bad Boy makes, but it's got everything that you need to get you in and out of the woods safely and to do the job very, very quietly. That brings me to my next point. So let's talk through some of my likes and dislikes and our experience in using this unit and why we enjoy it so much. All right, so now I'm gonna talk you through some of the things that we like and we don't like based on our experience in, in having our first electric side-by-side. -side. And this is probably gonna be one of the more controversial topics than we do in our five-part series uh, and one of the more controversial topics that's out there because I know there are a lot of apologists out there who love their gas-powered um, side-by-sides, who love their ATVs, and that's fine, right? I'm not saying that this is the only way uh, or the best way, but this is what we found that has worked really well for us. Um, I'm sure there have been a lot of deer that have been killed by people that are in those, those units. Um, probably a lot of deer that have been shot from people sitting in those units. Um, but as I mentioned, everything that we're going to review in this series is something that fits with our philosophy and our style. Um, we're very much uh, about trying to hunt non-invasively. Um, as much stealth as we can possibly manage. And there are no guarantees in this business and having something that's electric as opposed to gas or practicing good scent control um, or uh, night vision as opposed to the green lights. If you saw our first video in the series, there are no guarantees, right? But our philosophy is if we can try to be a percent better or 2% better with everything that we do, you add all those up and maybe we're eight or 10% better and maybe that changes your hunt. Um, so this is something that falls into that category, right? So one of the things that we love about using this bad boy recoil is um, stealth. It's uh, quiet, right? So you don't have a gas engine. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, how good your muffler is or you can't hear it 
when you fire it up from you know two miles away and drive it into the woods. Um, it's very very quiet. Imagine you know a golf cart that you uh, that you'd hear driving by out on a golf course. That's essentially the same thing uh, that you get here, uh, albeit, albeit maybe with a little bit more road noise from a more aggressive tire. It's very very quiet. Additionally, you get more stealth from not having additional scent that you're putting down when you go into the woods for work days. When you go into the woods for your hunting, uh, your hunting trips it's not putting out gasoline and exhaust um, vapors into the air. And so in addition to not being able to hear you, uh, you're not leaving residual scent as well. So um, no sound, no scent, uh, increased stealth. We love it for those reasons. Um, it's very, very versatile and flexible. So when you're not using it for hunting, we love to use it around our neighborhood. The family rides it around. They take it to the, um, to the amenity center in the neighborhood. Um, the kids really enjoy it. We take it to the pond. Uh, we can use it for yard work and just carrying around bags of mulch and everything like that. Um, and it, it's very, very usable for the entire family. And with the addition of the safety harnesses and the seat belts, it makes it very safe for using it for those purposes. All right, so let me tell you just a couple of the things, and there are only a couple, that we've learned about using an electric vehicle um, that we don't really like or haven't had a good experience with. Um, the first is range. Uh, the manufacturer says that with some of the newer units and newer batteries, you can get up to 40 miles out of a single charge. I don't think that that's accurate at all, uh, especially when you put all of your gear in here and you're driving it on muddy roads and up and down hills and the like. Um, you're not going to get 40 miles out of it. I'd say 20 to 25 miles is about the most you're going to get. We just replaced the batteries in this unit this spring, name brand batteries all the way around, and I'd say 25 miles is about the most that I could possibly hope for out of it. Um, but that said, 25 miles is usually okay, right? If you're planning a single day hunt and you plan your route pretty carefully, that will generally work. And it runs really strong for the entirety of that hunt. Now, if you're going into the mountains or you're going to your hunting camp and intending to stay for several days um, and don't have the ability to recharge the unit, then this could be a little bit of a problem, right? You're not gonna go for a three day hunt and have this probably last you with no issues. Um, which leads me to the next point. This takes a little bit of planning and, and sort of forth, uh, forethought. Um, you have to think ahead and charge the unit before you go out. So if somebody calls you and wants you to leave your house in an hour and you've had this sitting for five days and haven't charged it, you're probably going to have a difficult time with those kind of impromptu hunts um, versus an ATV or something that's gas powered. You could just throw it on the trailer and go as long as you got gas in the tank. Those are really the only two negatives that we found um, in using this unit, but the pros far outweigh the cons. Um, this really fits our style of just trying to be as non-invasive and as stealthy as we possibly can. And again, there's no guarantee, um, but we find that the quieter we can be and the less invasive we are when we go out for work days and everything really help us to not spook game uh, and to make us more successful hunters. We're gonna switch this from max range to max speed. And what happens when you do that, it goes from about 80% power from the batteries to the motor to 100% power. And you can get a top speed of close to 25 miles an hour. So we're gonna ramp this thing up, see if we can have some fun. Man, that was fun. That was a great afternoon. We got out and got the kids dirty a little bit. You'd never know it, but I actually washed this thing before we brought it out here, but we didn't intend to bring it home clean anyway. Um, real quick before we go, we talked a lot about stealth and sound and, um, and everything. So we're just gonna show you a quick sort of side-by-side -side or pass-by comparison. Um, one of our friends with an ATV and then us coming behind um, with this bad boy recoil running on electric. Just see if you can hear the difference. You guys judge for yourselves. that all about do it for us today. I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, if you're in the market for a new ATV or it's near the end of its life, give electric a try or at least give it a look. We have really enjoyed ours and gotten a lot of use out of it. We really think this is something that's contributed to our success as hunters uh, here in the early going. So give it a look. There's no magic bullets. There's no guarantees in this business, but I think that this will really help you and it's helped us a lot. God bless. We'll see you next time.